where my grandmother is, like right here, I'm probably like right here. Part of it is just like the feeling, nostalgia, the family. That's the power of like home cooking and having it together with people that you really love. Life's too short to eat with people that you don't want to eat with. My name's Max and I'm from Mofuku Sambar and I'm here to cook some KL style Hokkien Mee. The original dish from my grandma's time, it's pork, some shrimp in there, squid. The version that we're doing today would have other kinds of seafood. Lobster, king crab, shallon shrimp. That's the fun part. So the first step I would do is to just gather all the ingredients that you need and honestly, this is like a home cooked dish. Don't try to get too complicated with it. Just start peeling off the uh, napa cabbage. Trim off the ends. These are like the nice leafy part of the cabbage that I really like using. And honestly, I'm trying to recreate this from memory and either my grandma's gonna start yelling at me. <laughs> that's like, that's not what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna start cutting the onions. Just do like thick cuts. You really wanna have the textures while you're eating. If you cut it too small, it, it really just disappears in the dish. So garlic, you really want to chop it a little bit more fine than the rest just because you don't want to bite into a, a huge piece of garlic. In this dish, I chose to use Chinese broccoli. You can use any greens that's a little bit hearty. You want to keep them as whole as possible. For the leaves, I usually just rip them off and just let it go down the middle. For the stems though, you know, cut it on the bias. Same thing, you want to have that texture, mouthfeel. So enoki usually comes in plastic bags and the bag gets a little bit more dense. This is just a one-two step. First part, second part, and anything beyond this, you don't really want to use it. Green onions, scallions, whatever you want to call it. The top green part, I'll save for finishing garnish. And the bottom whites, I'll use it for the dish while cooking in it. So now we've done the vegetable part of the dish and we're going to bring in seafood component. King crab. And you can get frozen king crab legs out there. It would be great if you're lucky enough to find the raw frozen guys, just because it will lend the flavor of the king crab back into the dish. If you can't get the raw frozen guys, the cooked ones work perfectly fine as well. I'm trying to use the cleaver to break this up a little bit, just because I feel like it's a fun way to break out the cleaver. Put it next to what you're gonna cut and just hitting on the back of the knife or you could go. Oop, she's gone. But at the same time, like using the scissors at home is actually very approachable. You know, cut them into like manageable pieces just so that you can get into the flesh. All right, Mr. Lobster. I'll just twist the tail part off. Try to keep all that good stuff in the head. Let's twist off the, uh, the claws. Just have a little crack, front and back. Lobster tail, I like to start a couple notches and try to split it down the middle. Same thing, just tip down first and let it right all the way down. Flip it around, finish off the job. Trying to get it into chunks. One, two. One. Oh. So for the shrimp, I use a smaller knife for this, and you just want to use the tip of the knife, the front inch, and just ride it down the middle. And it almost feels like cleaning a shrimp for someone else. It's like a show of affection. Just like a perfectly peeled shrimp. Now we've got the seafoods ready. This is a great time to start soaking the noodles. These are called longevity noodles or ifu noodles. You just want to let it soak in hot water just to loosen it up and uh, rinse it off. So yeah, after a brief like one to two minutes soak, it's starting to loosen up a little bit. And I think we can go ahead and start cooking the dish. Just start off with a neutral oil, grapeseed oil, even olive oil. And once that's going, Get all the vegetables in there. A light pinch of salt just to help season the food and break down the vegetables. It will come down to probably half 
the volume that you put in initially. I would usually put in like a splash of uh, chicken stock. You just want to have it lightly cooked. So pop the lid on and let that steam kind of build up. You can actually hear it like going, which is a good sign. Once the cabbage starts turning a little translucent, you're getting close. All right, that's about where you want to take it. Have a bowl that you've been using the whole time and just kind of get this back out. Once the vegetables all turned out, you'll add about a pint of chicken stock. So a pinch of salt in there. I love white pepper. This is quite the uh, distinct spice in the dish. Using a good amount of white pepper, it's where you want to be. One of the uh, other distinct ingredients, it's something called soy caramel. It has a very deep, rich color. You want to just kind of adjust the color of the dish. You probably can go pretty heavy to start about half a cup. Now this is on a rolling boil and this is a great time to do the slurry, this dish has its own viscosity, so it actually clings onto the food. Just add enough water to the cornstarch, and it has to be boiling while you stream this in. So slurry is in, the sauce is thicken up. Now it's a great time to add in the seafood. You want to add in the big boys in there first, usually the claws, then the king crab. It's going to be so good. That's the shrimp. Once the seafood's all in, I'm gonna crank up the heat a little bit more and let it sit in there. Lid on. Shouldn't take more than two minutes to kind of get it cooking. Oh yes, she is coming. So a great way to tell if a shellfish is close to being done is when the shell's turning red. At this part, you just want to put that in the noodles first. Great time to add more of that brown sauce. There we go. Once you feel like the noodles have absorbed a lot of that liquid, this is where you see all that liquid from the vegetables. You want that. Definitely want all that. And this is the point where you ask yourself, you should have gotten a bigger pot. But no, it's gonna work out. And I remember like vividly, my grandma didn't have like a big pot. You would see her just trying to get all that motion, all that vegetables, all mixed up in there. A little bit more of that brown sauce, the soy sauce caramel. And the good thing about this soy sauce caramel is very, very low sodium. So to get that color that you want, you're not worried about it being too salty. So at this point, it's like ready. It's ready. So yeah, that's uh, my grandma's noodles. KL style hock and me. I'm really excited to eat this. The idea is just like, it's just gonna be dripping with all the sauces and juices. Treat yourself, get a king crab. I wanna get some of that crab meat. Let's double up. Get some of that lobster guy. Mm. Just eating that just reminds me of just being around family. My grandma will probably say, this is not right. This is not how I make it. This doesn't taste like what I make it. But you know what? That's how we progress. We cook in memory of people, whether if you've cooked it with them or without them, what that counts is what the meaning of the dish is, what emotion going through. And, and frankly, when she's cooking it, I'm sure she's thinking about wanting to make this the best thing for people, for her family, for us. So for the recipe, click in the link below.